Okay, okay. Hi, I'm Tim Holzheim, I'm a master's student at the RWTH Aachen. I'm currently working for the I5 Information Systems and Database Department. And I'm Wolfgang Fahl. I'm also working at RWTH Aachen in the Confident Project together with Tim. And Tim is going uh, to hold most of this uh, talk because he created the prototype for, the, for this multi-page spreadsheet editing. And currently it's a prototype, but we have the intention to make it public, so there will be a poll how much value such a, pro, uh, a solution would have for you. So please participate in the poll as soon as you've got the feeling um, that you can make a decision on that by what Tim and I am going to present. Okay, so first of all, we are going to explain why in the first place do we need a spreadsheet editing for uh, Wikimedia. And this is why we are going to talk about uh, one-to-n relations in the media wiki and uh, why this style of editing one-to-n relations and entities in one-to-n relations in the media wiki is a slow approach and what currently uh, what are the current approaches to mass edit these pages then we are showing our prototype and on how we are uh, able to uh, edit all these pages uh, by going over a spreadsheet and explain our use case and then talk about how this could be uh, transformed into, ne into a generic uh, spreadsheet editing solution also for other wikis. So first of all, how is the data represented and stored in a wiki? So typically the main information about a page is uh, typically represented in an info box and the data for this box is mainly uh, provided in a template uh, in a template design. For example, here we have the template event with different parameters describing different properties of this page, which is then represented in this uh, info box. In our uh, in our meta model, this representation is called Wikisun markup. Wikisun stands for Wiki Simple Object Notation. With the template name represents the entity. So, for example, this page is of type uh, is an entity event, and the parameters describe the property of this uh, of this entity. And as you can see here, uh, the series SMVCon is represented here as a page link, and this defines the one-to-end relation between a series and an event. And now is the question. Um, how can we edit multiple events, for example, if we want to add a complete series? So, uh, uh, yeah, besides this uh, storing um, the properties for, um, like here in this case, for the complete uh, page, there's also another option, for example, um, in one of our wikis, we use a list of problems where we store multiple problems on one uh, wiki page and each problem is um, stored in 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 a sub object. Oh, wait, maybe it should go here. So, for example, here we have thirty nine problems in in the complete wiki, and on the March twenty four we had two problems. In this case, these problems, as you can see here, we have two problems on one side, and. If we go into the source code, we see here the wiki markup, uh, the, the, the wiki son markup, and also can see here it's, for example, the project is defined the problem and also the store mode. So in, in, in this case, for problems in the template, the store mode defines if it's, for example, assigned as a property, like in the example before for the event, the properties are directly assigned to the page. But here we define store mode sub object, and this means it's stored as a sub object. Same for the second problem, it's stored as a sub object. And this we can define multiple entities and, and, and this, uh, define, uh, assign the properties to this sub object. But this is a, a sub optimal solution because it introduces complicated queries to extract this uh, data because we need to go to the sub-object on the page and not to the page itself. And um, yeah, also introduces new issues to uh, mass edit these sub-objects. 
Yeah, and for our use case, for example, if I uh, stick to the same um, example as before, like uh, series and uh, events. For example, here is the uh, worldwide web conference. We have um, 27 entries in our wiki. And now you see that, for example, the ordinal is only set for one entry. And if we now want to add, for example, all ordinals, we need to go individually to each page, go to edit, maybe you can demonstrate it. We need to go to the page and we need to go to the edit section, edit the ordinal. Uh, and it was the uh, 25th. And for example, it's, um, let's say it's the second, but changes. Now we have set the ordinal, but then we also need to go back to the um, series again and do it for all the other events. And if, like in this case, we have uh, a complete series of events, we need to do it for each individually, meaning that, for example, in this case, 110 clicks to edit just one single property to the page, which could be done uh, much more efficiently if we had a mass edit tool. And for example, there currently also exist um, mass editing tools. For example, in the data transfer extension, you can export uh, the uh, templates data and also the free text as a CSV file, like in this right car, for example, if you export it with CSV, with the extension, you get the title and also you get the uh, different um, template properties, for example, acronym, event series, event ordinal, and so on. But yeah, th th this works great for, for well-formatted uh, CSV files. But for example, if you have um, different uh, operating systems, for example, um, like you have Excel in a German format, Excel in uh, with English language, then for example, for the float value, you have different uh, exportings, for example, like for flow value, we have in German the comma and in the English version the, the point. And this introduces new problems that you need to consider uh, when uploading the CSV file, for example, by setting correctly the CSV export format. But in our case, where we have a lot of unexperienced users, this is a bit tricky to, to ask them to uh, specify the CSV export because um, they uh, barely know all the functions of Excel. So, uh, for example, we also don't have uh, automatic checks. For example, if the uh, if the value that's, for example, assigned to a start date is really a, a date or if it's just a year, so we don't have um, much validation uh, possibilities when we use this uh, import tool. So this is why. Uh, we, uh, in our use case, we wanted a uh, spreadsheet editing so that we can export the complete series as a spreadsheet where we can edit the data and then with our automatic service later also validate, normalize, and also enrich the data before even before downloading. Yeah, Wolfgang, maybe you can explain our use case better. Yeah, this is a part of where I'm asked to explain how we do this in open research. We've got incomplete um, series entries there quite often, uh, which is naturally so. And then uh, we are taking into the first step that we query the open research, and the first step would be the enhancement. So we actually intend to look up data from other sources, uh, which we currently don't do much, but we, we could do that. And that's important that we've got these two steps, the enhancement step, the validation step, and then have the spreadsheet editing in between. Because later on, we want to automate quite a bit of this. And basically, what we want to try out is how well our automation works. And this is like a, a control step. The enhancement step allows you to add data, check it um, before you do something, um, make sure that the formats are correct. And then the spreadsheet editing goes on, which is basically the same as you had in the past, except step three is done, before you put the stuff into open research back, there is a validation phase. 
And this idea is basically what we want to implement. And it also gives us the option that from the validation, we can decide where we put the data. We could put it into multiple targets, being the wiki, or for instance, this could be Wikidata or another data sync. Yeah, maybe we now do a live demo of one of the series. So we're now in one of the wikis where, as I showed before, we have the ordinal problem. So we now want to, to edit the ordinals. And now we can go to our service. And, and here we see how the data is currently represented here. It uh, is for the prototype, it's extracted nightly to be a, uh, just a bit faster, but in the future, we want to change it that it's directly queried from the wiki. Um, so now I can download the complete series, which will uh, can directly open it in Excel, in my case, Liebe Office Color. So now I see that I have here two uh, tables in the, in the Excel document, mainly the series, so the one relation, and the events, so the one-to-end relation, so the events are stored in this table. As you can see here, here are the, uh, the, the properties of the series stored. And now if you go to the events, you can see here that we have uh, all the event data. Now we first want to sort the all the all the entries so that we can better add the ordinal. Yeah, this looks fine. And now where's the ordinal column here? Now we want to add the ordinal. I can add basically just drag and drop it in. And now what is interesting here is that if we complete the series, we are here by uh, at, at five in 1996, but only have two columns left. When I uh, prepared this uh, example, I uh, looked into the conference and saw that our data in our wiki is incomplete. So they were in, in 1995 and 1994, two events in each year. And now we can basically just add a new row, which I uh, prepared because I also um, added the, the date, which would be not really informative if I edit here and look it up. So what I basically did here is I added two new, new rows, which I will result in newly created event pages for the uh, fall event and the uh, fall event in 1994 and 1995. So I, I, I save it up and now can go back to this uh, to the site select the um, uh, the prepared file where I uh, fixed the ordinal and uploaded uh, and added the, the missing events. I can basically upload it, see the progress. If I go to the uh, event series after completion, I can uh, see that all of the changes were applied to the uh, corresponding pages. So. As you can see here now, now the ordinal is completed. And we also see that um, the missing pages were added. If we can now also take a look at the uh, source code and see that the Wikisun markup was correctly generated. And uh, for example, we also could take a look in what's added into the recent changes. We see that it's added by the spreadsheet import. For example, maybe could uh, make it uh, edit. So here now we see that the ordinal is added. So yeah, um, so now it's a question, how can we generalize this problem so that it could be applied to other, um, to other wikis? So first of all, we have an extraction phase, an editing phase, and then the publishing phase for the um, uh, the updated spreadsheets are then import, uh, the updated wiki markups are then applied to the wiki. But first of all, in the extraction phase, we query the source wiki, for example, for the uh, for the pages, 
and download the wiki markup files, extract from these files and the um, corresponding uh, entity data, convert it to a spreadsheet in the editing phase, have here the op optionals to, uh, uh, in the pre-processing phase to enhance the data, for example, by adding new, for example, a wiki data ID or some other identifiers or, for example, reformat the date. Then the user can uh, download and edit the spreadsheet. And after uploading, we can uh, apply different post-processing steps, for example, validating the input, the user, and so on before uploading it. Uh, Wolfgang, do you want to add something here? The question was uh, what we have in the chat that we're talking an open source multi page editing solution. And uh, what we propose is that there should be three phases which you can specify. Alexander has asked what the advantage would be compared to the multi page editing of page form. And it's basically uh, that you can have an enhancement and result check phase and that you can specify where your queries from come from. So ideally, in the um, and then Extraction phase, you could specify different sources like queries to other Spark URL sources, SQL engines, or whatever. So, this would be, be basically be a combination of different things that is currently done in PHP um, extensions. And we propose to not do that in an extension right in the wiki, but to externalize this thing so that um, the programming is more open and that you use RESTful APIs as we did. So, we are currently using Python as an implementation language. But using a RESTful APIs means that there is um, no limit to what programming language you're using, and there's no need for an extension. You can simply do that. So please vote if you think this is a good idea uh, or not so valuable for you so that we get feedback whether we would invest in this. In principle, we can do that, and I'll tell you more about that in the discussion. OK, maybe I can also add something to this. So in the page forms, you can also define a regex. But uh, with the uh, post-processing, it's you have much more power to actually uh, ver verify the data that was uploaded, for example, by matching it against. We need to move on because there are already questions coming in. So let's okay. go to the last slide and then do the discussion. Okay. Yeah. So the current limitations are that we require that the data is encoded uh, in the uh, template format, like in the um, Wikisum notation because there's also the possibility to assign properties in the template. But this means that the data is not defined on the page, but is only queryable. Uh, another limitation is currently that uh, there also exists the, the ability to for, for in-text annotation, which would make the deletion a bit more complicated because it's defined in-text and uh, might be visible. So updating these values might be uh, problematic. So. As I said, uh, we currently require uh, a meta data management like Pierre Racine. Yeah, and open issues are also the deletion of pages and the deletion of properties. And uh, a current approach that we want to implement is, for example, a deletion character. For example, if you put a, a tilde in the cell, the value, corresponding value is deleted. Yeah, so this is the tools we're used. Uh, Parse party media wiki may, uh, mainly to extract the data from the uh, to to get the pages from the wiki and also to apply the uh, to write it back to the wiki wiki render to render the markdowns that we uh, edited yeah and pilot search to handle the list of dicts yeah and now we are open for questions and feedback. And one point, exactly. thank you, Tim. I would like to point out that this is your talk. Um, in the um, event schedule, it still, still says that I would be the speaker. I'd love your picture to see there because this is many of your work, and um, I think it's, it's, it's an interesting contribution. But I'm interested what others say. So, Bernd, may I ask, uh, answer your first question? Yeah, uh, sure. Thank you. So, you, you asked, but when you externalize this, you could also use OpenRefine. Uh, which is true, and this would be like one of the steps you could do, and, and you could even use OpenRefine as your editing tool, um, which is one of the options we look into. And basically, using OpenRefine has motivated us to do these things, because um, when you want to do like a first, second, third something, 
that's a kind of calculation that's a bit tricky for some of the tools. Like Excel can't do that, and even OpenRefine can't do that properly, but we've got libraries for these things. So basically what we found was um, a lot of systematic issues in our data where we said, okay, this could be systematically solved if we apply our own algorithms. And that's why our own software must be in, involved in this. And that would mean write a mini wiki extension, write an open refine extension, write something. And we were going, why, why should we do that? Why don't we write the software and simply offer an interface for this? And simply by linking the parts together in a certain way, make sure that all everything works together so that we're not so platform dependent and, and binding ourselves to a certain tool. Okay. Do we have other questions? I don't see. I didn't any. see any votes yet in, 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 in the voting. I'd be interested in what we get there. We had uh, the user poll is is online. So if you if you click. Uh, on the top on the polls next to the chat, we have some votes already. So we have 10 votes who say very high value, four votes medium, one low, and two don't know. Oh no, they're coming more in. So basically people are very interested, I would say. So 52% say hi. Can you of the vote result with your screen? Because I don't see it right now. Uh, I cannot share this because, um, because if I would share my screen with me in it. What what do you see if you click on the polls tab? Oh, you, you probably see the questions, but everyone who, who uh, answered We'll see the results. Okay, that's great. So, so I'll just have to wait. Yeah, so so the others can all already see that. There's more coming in. Yeah, but uh, the uh, very positive results for your work to continue. Okay, so thank you very much. No further questions are coming in. So thank you for this. You're welcome. Um, have a good day. Uh, we have, oh no, there's a question coming. If the data is in MediaWiki, it seems to me that the solution is still tied to the platform. So wouldn't it always be a case of creating an extension or improving the edit capabilities of MediaWiki? I don't see the question, so could you read it again, please? Um, if the data is in MediaWiki, it seems to me that the solution is still tied to the platform. So wouldn't it always be a case of creating an extension or improving the edit capabilities of MediaWiki? Yes, there could be a way to do that. So basically, if, if you would ask uh, the Semantic Media Wiki community to, uh, as an issue, for instance, say, hey, we want this. Um, currently, I think the um, the whole community works like that, 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 that we work by extensions. And that's why the multi-page editing was done by Bayern, for instance. And others have proposed solutions for that. And we just came up with another idea how to do that. It's not necessarily uh, the only or the best idea. Um, but for our use case, it works. So we were wondering whether others would have similar use cases. And, and then, as I said, we could offer to work on this because we are DFG funded. And uh, the DFG says, if we can give something back to the community, they'd love that. Um, we've got to solve our own problems, obviously. But if we can generalize them, that's always a plus. Okay, thank you. Any more quest uh, questions or comments on this? 
Um, if anybody doesn't want to type in the chat, you can also click on join. Then I can, uh, you can also ask a question directly with audio and video. OK, there's a comment to internal, internalize is more constraining, but you get a larger user base. Yeah, I mean, um, the, the interesting part is also uh, for this open refine, I've, I've used that also uh, because it's, it's quite convenient. You can, you can import an ask query or a, a, some kind of a result format of semantic media wiki directly in open refine. And then you can, for example, uh, mingle uh, and, and, and use this reconciliation with, with uh, Wikidata, for example, if you want to, to uh, use Wikidata IDs in your semantic media wiki. So you can do that. Um, what is actually missing then, I think, is backporting the, the data to semantic media wiki. So for that, you would, you would need data transfer or your solution. Um, yeah, or you could do an, an extension, like do an actual reconciliation. Because uh, Open Refine supports reconciliation backends, so you've got already got one for Wikidata, you've mm -hmm. got one for GND, and having a reconciliation backend for Open Refine would be just the same. But that's a bit different than what we do, uh, because it would only do the the export part. So our main thing are the two parts where we have these phases of enhancing the data automatically, not manually like you do in Open Refine, where you have to specify every step yourself and get into that. That's not good enough to doing mass data. And checking is important for us because you have got this spreadsheet editing in between where people manually do some things and they will maybe well intended and do like a lot of good stuff. But we had bad experiences with that in the past that all of a sudden you've got like 50 events which are all completely wrong. Um, and uh, that's why we have ratings and, and checkers where we, where we can check the data. And integrating those ratings and checkers into the wiki itself with an extension that was too much work for us at this point but that could also be an approach to have a general checker like anytime you save the data some checking via restful interface is done that would also be a good thing so i'm actually open to some extensions but i'd always go for the restful solution and not implement them in php Okay, thank you. I see no more questions coming up. So thank you, Tim and Wolfgang, for yeah. this interesting presentation. And uh, good luck with your with your work. Uh, we are interested in how it how it goes on. Uh, I hope you will you will maybe stick around a little longer and we could meet in the coffee house or so. Um, but for now, thank you. Yeah, certainly. See. Thanks, Brian. Bye. OK, so we are quite punctual. Uh, actually, a little bit over punctual, but that's fine. Um, Ed, hello. Hi, <laughs> uh, what do you say? It's, it's time for us to close the conference. Can you believe it? It's incredible. and. Um, <laughs> Indeed, quite punctual. We had we had a, we had some troubles uh, the first day, but um, the re the rest was perfect. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's uh, it's time for us, I think, uh, to say thank you. Um, uh, especially, I want to say thank you to our sponsors, um, which you can see if you click on the reception and you have you have seen it. And uh, especially, I want to mention uh, Kisin IT. Uh, who is this year's gold sponsor, and also uh, the uh, MediaWiki stakeholders group, uh, which uh, invites you to join uh, to join this, this stakeholders group. Um, so check out their uh, their booths at the expo. There's still time. Um, the uh, the conference is going on. If you if you if you look at the top for another five and a half uh, half hours. Why? Well, because. Um, it, uh, Hopin is open uh, still, so even if we now are closing the conference, uh, you can still meet in the coffee house. You can still uh, find people to join you in the in the hack space. 
maybe uh, fire up a Docker container that was that was presented yesterday. Check out the uh, the author extension or, or whatever you you're up to. Um, so you you can, you can you can feel free. There is no recordings in the in the coffee house and the hack space. <clears throat> um, also, this um, uh, this session is is open, but once you uh, after we have closed now, uh, reappear here in this session and and share your audio and video. It will be recorded, so uh, just uh, just for information. The recordings we will upload to YouTube. It's going. It's going to take some time because um, uh, we have. You can see it on the replay button. We have the, the whole day in several hours, so we have to cut this and uh, and, uh, and upload it to YouTube. So bear with us. It's going to take a while. Um, <clears throat> meanwhile, also I want to mention. Uh, please look out for the next EMWCon that uh, probably should should take place uh, somewhere uh, uh, in spring next year. And of course, the next SMWCon that will be again in fall. Uh, we don't know. We don't know exactly when and uh, and where. But look out at semanticmediawiki.org. Uh, join our community. Uh, and help out wherever you can. We we need we need uh, helping hands. Um, yeah, at what is left uh, what is left to say. Uh, thank you for all the great presenters. Um, uh, thank you, Ed, for our wonderful cooperation this year. I think it worked out quite well. Um, thank you for all the pleasure participants you, who showed up. Pardon? It's a pleasure to work with you. Oh, yeah, thank you. Uh, same here. So, uh, yeah, thank you to all of the participants we had. And you, you cannot see that. I will, I will uh, reload it once more because uh, I'm doing this. We had all in all. What do you think, Ed? You, even you don't know. How many participants did we have over all, I, all the three days? I don't Take a guess. That. I wouldn't even know where to uh, find that information. Yeah. No, open. It is it is exactly 180, so I think that's a that's a great success. Um, so please um, stay in contact with us in the community. Uh, don't leave yet. Uh, if you have if you have more time, uh, stick around at the conference. But I think it's it's time for us to say uh, goodbye for now. Uh, it was a pleasure having you, and uh, see you again uh, at the latest next year, and hope to see you also during the year in uh, in some of our activities that we have. OK, so bye-bye. Nothing to add to that. Thanks, Bruno.